Chapter 8 Childlike Faith I would like to share with you a story of trust and faith. It is a simple story, but an important part of my early experience in believing God. It has since taught me several lessons. The Lord helping, it continues to do so. While we still lived in Windsor, when I was four or five years old, my friend across the street received a beautiful little Shetland pony from his uncle. From the front yard of our home, I watched as the little crate in which it was delivered was opened. Having never journeyed far from our village, I had never seen a pony before. I didn't know what to think. That animal was beautiful. It was brown and white with a perfectly shaped face which told me that it was good-natured and well-behaved. I was anxious to get a closer look, but for some time my mother would not permit me to go over to the neighbor's home, fearing that I might be an imposition on them. Since I couldn't see the pony very well from the ground, I would climb up on our fence as high as possible and look down across the road at it. Hanging there as long as I was able, I would watch it graze or move about. When it disappeared behind the shed or beyond the hill, I would have to get down and wait until I could catch a glimpse of it again. As soon as I would spot it, I would climb the fence, crane my neck, and look and look. I thought, oh, won't it be wonderful if Mother someday lets me go over to see that pony. On that memorable day when my mother said, you may go over to see Keith's pony now, Lauren. I ran as fast as my little legs would carry me. Across the street I went, down the lane, into the neighbor's barn, and scrambled up over the manger. That beautiful pony was only about seven feet from me. I was thrilled. This is great, I said to myself. I thought that pony was one of the most wonderful things I had ever seen and began to hope in my heart that someday I might have a pony like Keith Patty's. Over the years, as I have reviewed this experience of deep excitement which I had as a little boy, I have sometimes wondered how God finds us. Does He see us jubilant and impassioned over the marvelous truths of His Word? Is the faith burning in our souls so that we care more for our relatives and friends finding Jesus than we do about the latest fashions or the newest baby in town? I have seen many people so excited at ball games that they would yell and jump up and down. At prayer meeting, however, most individuals are listless and greatly lacking in enthusiasm. It tells me that there is a great need in most of our congregations or we would be more inspired by the kingdom of God than by these passing activities of earth. It appears in many of our churches that those professing to be Christians actually need to be truly converted and transformed, or they would possess an innate excitement over the things of God's kingdom. A few years later, when we had moved to Parker and I was in the third grade, I remember returning home from school one day for lunch. Rounding the corner at the porch, I looked east toward the little red barn, and what do you think I saw? There stood a black Shetland pony. It was a beautiful, beautiful pony with one white spot on the forehead and two above the shoulder. As fast as I could, I ran down to where the pony was grazing. The owners, an elderly couple by the name of Henheiser, were sitting in the buggy nearby having their lunch. He saw that I was delighted over the pony and asked, Would you like to ride Queen? Oh, yes, I told him. I had been waiting a long time to get this close to a pony. Ever since I prayed in my heart, I would like to have a pony like Keith Patty's. Mr. Henheiser said, Just a moment, and I will get her ready. I learned that they had come that morning approximately 18 miles in their little rig from the town of Ridgeville. They were en route to Muncie but instead of taking the more direct route west through Albany to State Road 67, 
They had come all the way south to farmland, then west on Road 32 to Parker. We needed to have a sandwich, the Henheisers informed me. So we unhitched Queen here to let her rest a while. They could have stopped many places up and down the highway, but they came to our house, a block off the main road. Of all the 700 people in the village, here they were at our place. I'll tell you, if you walk with God and trust Him, He will have the very thing for which you are waiting come to your place sometime. One of these days when you are not planning it, and least expect it, he will send it by. You will probably not receive what you plan, but if you are really looking to Jesus and wanting him more than anything else, he will give you the desires of your heart when you are not anticipating it. Never try to get anything. Only walk with Jesus, and he will trust you with the best, what you need when you need it. He might send it soon, maybe later, perhaps after a long time, but God will provide. He's known to give surprises to all his faithful pilgrims. And I was certainly surprised that day. I rode a pony for the first time in my life. Oh, the delight, the interest, the enthusiasm that was in my heart. If I could paint it in a picture, you would each chuckle, I'm sure. In fact, it would do your heart good because I was so wonderfully overjoyed. My child heart was thrilled to the limit. When Mother called me to come in for lunch that day, I wasn't much interested in food. Of course, when she said, come, I had to go. There wasn't any question about that. I tied the pony to the fence and went to the house. We had prayer and ate our soup beans. But I wanted to finish as quickly as I could to get back outside and ride Queen every possible minute before school took up. And that is what I did. When I ran back to school that afternoon, the bell was already ringing and I had to hurry. I said to myself, For two to three years I have been waiting for a pony, and this is the one. All afternoon, the pony was running through my mind. When school is over, I thought to myself, I will get Howard, my friend. Both of us can hitch up the goat to the little wagon and haul the debris out of the barn to the garden. We will get the barn ready for my pony because this is the one I have been waiting for. Somehow I knew in my heart that Queen belonged to me. Howard and I worked diligently that night and again the next evening cleaning all the accumulation of rubbish from the barn. By the third night, we had completed the task. Now, wasn't that unusual for a nine-year-old boy to decide to clean up the barn so that his pony could come? I wanted to have everything ready. I simply had a childlike faith that this was the pony God had promised me. I have since discovered that we cannot have faith unless we have love, for faith works and lives by love, as the Bible tells us in the fifth chapter of Galatians. If you wish for more faith, remember that your faith will be in proportion to your love. If you love, you will hear the word of God, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith will flourish in the heart filled with God's love, the precious love of Jesus Christ. Sensual, worldly love will fail you, but the love which Jesus gives never fails. A heart of love provides the right soil for faith to grow. If there are any rocks of doubt, darkness, sin, or lust in your heart, then faith is choked, twisted, and blotted out. In order to maintain a holy faith, you will be making everything ready in your heart by clearing out the debris of pride and self-reliance. You will be confessing all of your bitterness and resentment, for faith recoils from such inward disorder. Nor can faith dwell in a heart cluttered with criticism and contention. You must clear out, as well, all questioning and analyzation, trying to find out all the answers, seeking to know why and how, because... Faith only makes its abode in a heart free from the litter of carnal characteristics. 
After three days, I was saying, Let's get the manger fixed up for my pony. Many years later, my mother shared with me that during those days, my father was somewhat alarmed. He would ask her, Did you give that boy reason to believe that he was going to get that pony? And she would insist, Eldon, I haven't told him a thing. Well, I can't understand it, Dad would say. He has been cleaning that barn for three days and telling everyone that his pony is coming. About ten days later, my father took my brothers, Richard and Warren, and myself, into the Standard Oil bulk plant in Muncie to get some petroleum products. We were in one of those old Fords which had a middle door. The windows, you may remember, didn't crank up. There was a strap with which you pulled them up or down. In the front, a rather tiny seat folded forward to permit one to get into the back seat more easily. The gravel on old Route 32 was worn into ridges like a washboard, and it just bumped, bumped us much of the way. During the ride home, I had become drowsy. I was somewhat peevish and wanting to lie down to really rest. Pulling up to the front of that little red barn, my father said, Lauren? How would you like to open the barn door? Now, if you ask a child if he would like to do something, he will probably respond as I did. You see, I was a peevish and sleepy nine-year-old boy. You know how they can be sometimes. Many older people occasionally get that way as well, cross and contrary, not wanting to be disturbed, wanting to keep comfortable in their own little corner. I said... No. Then my dad spoke again. This time, it was not a request. It was a command. Son, you get out now. Open the door. When I received the order, I moved right away. He only had to tell me once, for I was taught not to delay. If an earthly parent needs to tell a child more than one time, then there is something in that child which must be broken. God cannot do much with a man or a woman who has not obeyed when he or she was a child. There is so much to break up in persons who have not been taught obedience as children. They are unwilling, most times, to pay the price which God asks. This is why we are hesitant to obey God. This is why we are so reluctant to obey God and do what He tells us. The lack of obedience in the church goes all the way back to the heart of a child when he was very little, whether or not he was tender and willing to be obedient to his mother and father. Much of our disobedience to God now goes back to our inner life when we were very young. And I can feel God operating within my heart as I tell you this. When my father gave me the order, I was quickly out of the car and on my way to the barn door, taking hold of it, I started to push it open. It was easy to move. I didn't have to push it much at all. Just as soon as that door opened a little bit, I saw my pony. Queen was right there before me. I jumped up and down. I hollered. I ran and got my arms around her neck and cried over and over, Oh, my pony has come. My pony has come. I was so happy. You talk about a child being happy. I cried with laughter and with joy. I was so thrilled. I said, Daddy, let's hitch up Queen, go to the elevator, and get a bale of hay and some corn right away. My pony had come, and I wanted her to have something to eat. I was elated. I'm even getting blessed now as I share it with you. Isn't it amazing that I am being blessed today about something which God did 48 years ago? When you are trusting Jesus, you will still get blessed about the things God gave you 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. You are delighted about it because the more you appreciate it at the time, the longer it will last. That is, if you are broken enough, keep praying enough, and obey sufficiently to maintain it. Of course, if you don't obey all the time, you will lose the appreciation, 
you will lose the praise and the joy out of your soul. The joy and the praise will stay in your heart as long as you obey God, and it will leave you when you disobey Him. Disobedience prevents joy coming into your heart, leaving you desolate and lost. Obedience brings a true holy joy to blossom and bloom, and its fragrance grows sweeter as time goes on. Over the years, I have often thought about that evening when I was riding, peevish and sleepy, and my father asked me if I would like to get out and open the door. I was hesitant and not really wanting to respond, but back of that door was the very thing I desired. My father's kindly request for obedience was lovingly taking me toward that which I had long expected, for which I had prayed and trusted. Yet, because of my human weakness, I did not want to open it when the opportunity came. In a similar way, many people miss the very thing for which they have prayed and trusted because they hesitate to obey God's gentle command, for He only requests us, He does not coerce us. Instead of responding with joy when the Holy Spirit prompts them, they either ignore the leading or begrudge the effort to open the door. If there is something you want very much, Keep trusting for it. Be prepared when you come to the door of opportunity. Listen to your Father's voice when He speaks. Hop right down from your comfortable corner and push back the obstacles. Don't let the bumps of misunderstanding and struggle in this life lull you to sleep. In this spiritual slumber, you won't move for God and do what He says. But as you persevere upon the way of trust and praise you'll be alert and able to know when you are near the goal. Do you know that when the pony arrived that day, my father gave a check for the complete price of it? The very day my queen came, she had been purchased in full for me by my father. Sometime there will come a day when that very thing for which you have been trusting so long is right here and it is yours. All you have to do is continue trusting and believing. Your Father has provided all that you need. You will receive it after a while. Don't press to get it. It will come in time as you let Him bring it to pass. A number of persons serve Jesus in order to receive certain things which they secretly desire. But the Lord will bring to the trusting heart everything that He needs, as He serves God only for Himself.